to have uh, employability there, right? But we are also seeing a challenge that, um, however, this alignment between curriculum and the teaching methods to support employability in computing courses has not been exploited. So in um, research done by Power, yes, um, Power just actually presented with uh, efficient uh, results that there's not much research that has taken place between teaching methodologies and employability. So in our research, we went on to see how we can have this um, employability being put into the classroom. So we're not talking about curriculum change, but you're talking about in implementing adequate methods that can improve the performance of a student, not only their retention level, but also the ability of having our students acquire adequate employability traits. I don't think it's um, essential for me to redefine employability, but when you talk about employability in our context, we're referring to the ability of having adequate traits that can ensure that the employee can not only get ad um, a, a proper job, in that field, but also can have adequate skills that can ensure that that um, graduate can sustain in that job environment. So we can say that research has presented the importance of curriculum design to suit employability, but there's still a dilemma in the delivery of that curriculum. So a lot of research is on the curriculum, but we are still looking at the classroom environment. So we are both, um, me and uh, Mr. Rangana, we are both computer science um, lecturers. So we got an environment of which we managed to research on that impact. Okay, so that's our background. Looking at, um, at the students that we had in our classroom, we analyzed that our students had uh, some challenges, especially when you get to uh, midterm, right? If, if you understand the uh, assessments found at uh, Botho University. We have got a midterm assessment and a final assessment. But when we got to midterm uh, assessment, we learned that our students had to do a lot of preparation. And then preparation mainly on the concept they learned in the first two weeks when they had to understand the course content. So we are taking a student, if it's an um, initial course, some students have not even learned on computing, right? And then you are putting them in the classroom when they start knowing about computing already within, what, nine weeks, they have to go through an assessment. So we wanted to create an environment on which we can assist those students to perform well in the classroom. So we're saying the research was to investigate from a learner's pers uh, perspective, if the iteration recap evaluation co-evolution in active learning has direct impact in the development of employability skills in teaching computer science. Okay, so how did you decide to do this? We want to analyze the present teaching environment. Then we went on to see, right, to investigate the impact of this um, approach on seeing uh, the students able to be motivated, are they able to get new skills, and it was also important for us to see the impact on the final assessment, of which unfortunately uh, we only did our assessment last week, so we don't have much results to publish, but we are gladly, um, actually we are excited because it seems like our students performed well in, in, in those modules compared to the students in that uh, branch. Okay, so I think it's important to talk about the learning environment. Um, many of us lecturers, we assume that the moment that I stand in front of a classroom, obviously my students are, what, are learning something. I think most of us assume that, right? The moment that I stay in the classroom and I deliver something new, obviously my students should learn. And then we assume that uh, our students are actively involved whenever a, a lecturer is in front. This is one of the researchers who has presented that. But in the last decade, it has been suggested that students should, not, should, not, should do more than just listening for us to create what we refer to as an active environment. A lot of benefits that have an active um, environment, some of them were presented yesterday by Dr. Mark, who actually talked about the importance of uh, collaboration, the importance of teamwork in the classroom, and some of the benefits and tools that can be used for an active learning environment. Okay, so a learning environment that results in maximum retention and increased ability to transfer learning in the real world settings is very different from a lecture plus problem set paradigm traditionally followed in computer science. 
So one might assume that the moment that I throw in um, um, a practical activity, definitely my students will understand. So we get to a point that when you are teaching, you can just introduce a new concept, you take an activity, you throw it in. But also there's some other important things that you might consider, like the importance of the learning outcome that is found from that activity. So all these things should be considered when you talk about an active learning environment. So I'm just going to pick a one author, who is Kano, Kano R, right? And he defines active learning take as a process that takes place when there is active participation in the learning process. And most importantly, the learner has to take responsibility of their own work. So this was also presented yesterday by Dr. Mark, who uh, talks about the, the level of thinking. And you have to get to a point when the learners take responsibility of their own of their own work. Okay, so it's important for us to see what we did. We just modified the traditional classroom environment and then we added some components which we thought they were essential to improve that environment. So it's, it's some, a simple process, but for us it worked. So we are assuming that in a traditional lesson, you introduce it. After that, one might do a recap, which is like taking what did the last lesson, you explain to the students what you did. Some might decide to put in the activity Right? And then from there, we go into the traditional lecture. At the end, one is expected to summarize. That's the traditional structure of a lesson. But we added a new component. The first component that we decided to do was to have a recap. But not only find recap was there, but we managed to have practical based activity recap uh, process, where like mainly it was uh, done in ICO and it was done in, in um, C++ also did it in, oh, sorry, uh, computing, introduction to computing in C++, and query and managing databases. So we had three courses that we did this in. So we actually realized that RECAP um, assisted us in having practical um, activities, and also we evaluated those practical. The lecture has given an option of presenting and also evaluating. So evaluation, you actually analyze the extent that the student has understood the concept. And then we went on to include collaboration. Benefits of collaboration have uh, presented already by other um, pronounced uh, doctors. And they've said that we have got the importance of collaboration has got, um, like what we are saying, critical thinking, right? Interest, in, interest is increased, of course, among learners, okay? And then it's got a high level of retention. So when a student is involved and manages to discuss about what they learn, they actually get to retain more than when you, they don't. And then, um, why collaborate? We had to colla collaborate that you can uh, create a platform that um, a student, after they've learned a new concept, they get to look at it, analyze it, and then um, they can learn, they can even um, master the concepts. So of course, it inc increased confidence, and the students were also um, able to continue with that knowledge, which I was saying to, referring to as a retention. So we didn't want to wait until a final assessment, or wait until revision session to show that the student has mastered the concept. Lastly, we had an evaluation, which is part of the collaboration. We're actually evaluating the, the lesson. So I'm going to ask um, the next, um, Mr. Turugare, to come and present on the IREC model. All right, um, thank you very much. Um, as you can see from um, from the from the projector there, uh, normally we say repeatedly doing things or doing a task makes experience concrete. It makes experience so bored to a person to an extent that when a person will repeat the same process next time, it won't be he won't be thinking about that um, that um, that that task. Instead, it will be part and parcel of what his or her life. Uh, that's why, before I move forward, that's why every day we say the soccer player should be go for training doing the same tasks because we want them to be so congregate in their practice and know where the other person, uh, the core player is for them to pass each other the ball. So in this case, we, we looked at that, um, that method which is called um, an iterative recap um, 
evolution, evolution co evolution we are saying we are putting recap and evaluation at them at the same time the iteration one is coming on the accumulation of recap instead in the normal lecture like right now we normally recap the previous lesson only but this time we are saying it in an iterative way recap is cumulative and it can be uh, there is now a relationship between a uh, recap and evaluation so this these two are closely married together they are married they cannot be separated in this method okay so what actually happens is in this approach the portion of the recap which is combined with evaluation which is is incremental in terms of loc allocation of content and time per session okay we are saying as it increments, we are also it, the time that is, it 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 uh, it it generates every session increase with the portion of the lesson that you are given. That if it is the fifth lesson or the fifth, sixth session, it also grows. How to illustrate this? The first lesson, the first lesson does not have uh, in this model doesn't have recap. We go normally as she was explaining, and what only the iteration will come on the second what on the second point. This is the iteration now. The first part on the, the first part here is written clearly. You have how many sessions? One, two, three, four, five sessions, right? And we have the recap portion and we have the, the additional lecture portion and as they, as they are listed there. Now what happened? You see on the first lecture, our portion of recap is just small like that. As we go to the second lecture, it, it increases. Fourth lecture, like that, until then, depending on the number of uh, sessions that you have created on that particular topic or chapter. This is chapter based. It's not a module based, it's chapter based. It accumulates until the end of the chapter, then it reinitializes to zero again, accumulates the next chapter and reinitializes to zero until you finish whatever the course outline or as it states. Right. How do we model this thing? How do you model this thing? Our, our recap, we are saying on top of them, we are saying the recap of the lesson, the first lesson, the first session is given by the content C. That is the content for the recap, right? Now, it means the subsequent recaps will be given as recap XI is equal to recap XI minus 1 plus recap XI minus 2. It means we are saying, for the first lesson, for the second session, we are taking a recap for the, pre uh, the content of the previous lecture plus the other one at the back. Then even the third lesson, it means the I will be taken with the value of three. Then it works like that in a recursive, in a recursive manner. Right? And that method, right, it saves a lot. Why? It is because the repetition of the recap is always giving students the opportunity to grasp the concept continuously for until the end of the chapter. This will give them enough experience to know the corner that they have, uh, to, to retain the subject matter, the corner that they have learned in the chapter. This helps also with the time they can recall what they have, they have learned because throughout they have been repeating the same thing, presenting, uh, writing tasks, but all the tasks that they will do is a practical task. So this is the experience that we are talking about. That the, the method as it is, um, it was uh, tested, it was piloted. The pilot study defined that the students were happy with this method. Secondly, the students, the students could review that they, they can memorize what, whatever they, they taught in the previous sessions.